two weeks after I had germinated a new batch of basil seeds and transplanted them in cups to develop into seedlings, I was ready to plant them directly on the ground. They had developed their first set of true leaves and although usually I would wait for them to grow a few more inches before transplanting, I had to get this batch on the ground as soon as possible. For my earlier direct seeding fiasco, I had two surviving basil plants and even though they were two weeks older than my new pre-sprouted batch, they were still on their second set of leaves. A few weeds dotted the line where they had been sown, but removing them was quick work due to the density of the mulch layer. I was hoping the new transplants would have a growth spurt soon as July temperatures started to become commonplace. Basil is a tropical weather crop and doesn't like any hint of cold. Knowing that, they should perk up as we entered into the 80s and 90s with high humidity and lows in the 70s at night. I had been applying successive layers of grass clippings over the bed and that had created a beautiful blanket to keep the roots cool and moist. If everything went according to plan, I would not have to water much at all and could soon start harvesting plump, fresh and fragrant basil leaves. Clearly these seedlings were still too young but I had to take the chance now to get them established before the weather changed on me. Unlike its neighboring bed, these tomatoes had struggled to get growing at first but that was about to change. Basil grows well around tomatoes. Do give them a bit of distance however, tomatoes can outgrow and overtake basil plants, casting shade. After planting the basil, I almost forgot about them, only remembering to mulch the bed. I never watered the tomato and basil beds, since we did have enough rain and the mulch helped the plants throughout the drier days. As late summer approaches, basil grows wild. It makes sense, it's a tropical plant, so why wouldn't it? So I'm gonna go out, get some basil and a few other ingredients from the garden to make a nice summertime recipe that's fresh, it's quick, and it's very flavorful. Making a recipe with many ingredients gathered directly from your garden is a wonderful experience. You can only know once you try it yourself. The basil looked great, despite the shaky start in the beginning of the season. It appears that a grasshopper is here, so I'm not the only one looking after seasoning my food with some basil flavor. I'm not gonna do anything to it because it doesn't eat that much. At least one grasshopper is not gonna cause a, a lot of damage, so I'll just leave it. There was more than enough to go around, especially since no groundhog or deer had attempted to raise my crop in this new place. It was probably due to my preventive strategy of putting all their favorite foods inside the protected beds. They don't seem to bother basil or tomato, probably due to their strong scent, so those were outside. It is important to pick your basil often, taking away any terminal bud that may be forming to grow out flower spikes. It is generally acknowledged that best basil flavor is produced when the plants are young before they flower. By picking up the top leaf pairs, you encourage the plant to put energy into producing more lateral leaves. That should retard the flowering of basil and give you a more bushy and productive basil plant. Besides the basil, I was also harvesting new tomatoes. I had cherry tomatoes already ripening. They were from a crossing I had saved seed from in my old garden. They most likely had the pink brandy wine as a parent with the cherry plant, so they exhibited great flavor. Unfortunately, they also inherited the trait of splitting the skin from the wild Galapagos cherry tomato parent. If it weren't for that, they would be perfect. I could still use them for cooking and they would be a perfect fit in my pasta recipe. Lastly, I decided to pick some bean pods that were starting to ripen. I wanted to use them as new beans at a stage before they become tough. This was more of an optional ingredient. Lastly, to punch up the flavor and act in harmony with the fresh basil, I got some sprigs of fresh parsley and headed inside to cook up a delicious, simple dish. 
I'll be back right after this commercial. If you're loving the video and would like to help me produce more, you can purchase an original painting from my Etsy shop or support me through Patreon. Your direct support is the reason why I have been able to produce two episodes a week during the spring, so thank you. With the main ingredients picked a few minutes ago from my garden, I was ready to start. The scent of basil and parsley was already intoxicating, but first I needed to cook up the pasta. I fill the pan with a few cups of water and let it boil over high heat. We will find we then I decided to pan fry the fresh beans, shelling them first. Once the water was boiling, I added salt to the water and dropped the pasta. I was using a gluten-free penne. Then I went about pan frying the fresh beans in olive oil. Although I would advise you to boil them in water until tender first, then pan fry it. You don't want to eat beans that are not 100% cooked, and I later felt that they could have been cooked better. I roughly chopped half of an onion and added it to the pan, letting them brown up. I finally chopped the parsley and added half of it to the other sauteing ingredients. I seasoned it with salt to taste. I then cut the cherry tomatoes into quarters and dropped them into the skillet. I rolled the basil leaves together and finely sliced them, julienne style, and reserved. By then, several minutes had passed and my pasta had thoroughly cooked. Using a kitchen spider, I drained the cooked pasta and dropped it into the skillet with the flavorings. When will we Finally, I picked up the rest of the parsley and the basil and added to the pasta stirring and turning off the heat in order not to cook out the more volatile basil flavors. Needless to say, this smelled great. A bit of extra virgin olive oil to finish and my dish was ready to be enjoyed. It 
it had been a great journey up until now, and by the taste of this dish, it had been worth it. I hope you get inspired to grow your own food and enjoy it as well. Leaving our fears to the past will